finals. Pitt Center in Chicago. We're set for our fourth and final quarterfinals of the Big Ten Tournament. The 11th seeded Illini of Illinois, number 17, third seeded Indiana. As there is one remaining slot in tomorrow's semifinals, Wisconsin, Michigan State, and Ohio State have all already advanced in the earlier quarterfinals here today. Welcome back to Chicago, Dave Barnett, Quinn Bucker. The contrast in this game, Indiana led the Big Ten in scoring this year. Illinois was by far the lowest scoring, worst shooting team in the league. And the question becomes, do they have enough firepower to stay close to the Hoosiers today? Well, that's what Illinois has to try to answer today. Corey Bradford, their freshman, has been outstanding. Big Ten player of the year. He'll get his numbers. He needs help. Indiana is powered by A.J. Guyton and Luke Recker. Those two guys together give them a really good one-two punch, and I expect we'll see them come out of the box firing early. Illinois surprised six-seeded Minnesota last night, 67-64. They did so because Quincy Lewis, top scorer in the league, second in the country, had a 3 of 17 uh, meltdown, eight points. If they can do anything like that defensively to Recker and Guyton, that's the best way for them to stay in. Dave, Illinois, I think, has always been a solid defensive team. Where they've had trouble is turning the ball over. They have tried to put a couple guys at the point guard position they'll go sometime with Nate Mast Corey Bradford tried it for a while when they turn it over they obviously don't get as many possessions so they struggle to score Lon Kruger and the Illini have gone to the NCAAs each of the last two years 22 and 23 wins his first two years with Illinois his lineup featuring talented freshman Corey Bradford the Big Ten freshman of the year first Illini ever to win that award their leading score 15 points per game for Indiana they feature their leading scorer, sophomore Luke Recker from Auburn, Indiana, who had two good games against Illinois. Bob Knight has turned in his 20th 20-win season out of 28 at Indiana. Had to make a late change. Kirk Haston fractured a bone of metacarpal in his left hand Saturday in the last regular season game against Iowa. And is not starting tonight, and they've gone with Larry Richardson, 6'8", junior, in the middle instead of Haston. I think they feel comfortable with that. Larry, Larry Richardson does not give you nearly as much offense as you would get from Kirk Haston. They said he did practice, practice better early than he did late with that hand. Tom Rucker, Phil Bova, Sam Licklider. Are the officials, Indiana wins the tap, and record goes to work against freshman Lucas Johnson. Takes him right in. Record is aggressive and scores offensively. I think the balance of the team feeds off of that. Shuku Debe. Have it knocked free to McLean. Three-point try. Oh. Demir Kupalga, who made only four threes this year. Well, he was in rhythm on that shot. He took it and knocked it right down. Indiana has not come close to dealing with Kupalga in the two meetings. 19 points, 12 boards in one game, 16 boards, 8 points in the other one. Record double team gets it out to Gladness. Now A.J. Guyton. Gladness, the senior, West Memphis, Arkansas product, in for Richardson. Larry Richardson on the board. They got to do a nice job getting to Larry Richardson. They put Sergio McLean, who's 6'4 and strong, on A.J. Guyton, and it'll make it tougher for Guyton to get shots. Off the mark that time by Chuku Debe. Long pass oh my Richardson, goodness. and it counts. First of all, the catch was unbelievable. The catch was, for this was a guy that when he got there, you know, just really didn't seem to have a real feel for basketball. The pass is thrown up ahead and you watch he catches it moving away from the basket and shoots it up there with a touch look at that one hand just to stop it and to get it to go down well, i'm not sure which was more impressive catch or the finish and he gets the three-point play they were both top flight you don't see that from many players anyway seven three hoosiers indiana out in there man to man which is traditional for them Sergio McLean, who shot just 37% during the season. Much of oh, which he played out of position. Back door, Rob Turner from record. Oh, record had it coming on the break, and he threw a pass that I thought was a bad decision and put it on the money for Turner. So records come out not only scoring, but looking to find people. Who's Krupalia? 
native of Sarajevo, immigrated from Bosnia. Offensive put back, Lucas Johnson. You know what I like about Illinois' team? Their team, that is, as much as they may struggle offensively, they never quit. They, they never seem to get rattled either. And those two ways, they really mirror the personality of their coach, Lon Kruger, and traveling on Indiana to turn it over. You've got to be able to deliver the ball right here. The ball is delivered to a wide open turner. Now you'll watch. It'll be hard to see how that ball gets through there. He threw it right over McLean's head. Gave him a new part. That turnover, <laughs> the first in over 20 minutes, going back to the second half last night of the Minnesota game, the first forced in that span of time by the Illini. They're going to stay in this one. They have got to play some defense. Best Hawkins, backup center, right to work. Best Hawkins has an awkward-looking game, but he can score. He's in the big body, 6'10", 270, sophomore from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Johnson out on Wrecker. Tried to draw the foul, offensive rebound. Turner couldn't get the put back. And it's Bradford handling it in transition. Finds his spot from 18 feet. I was wondering when he was going to get a shot up. His teammates had gotten one goal. Well, everybody else has been involved. Now he's got to deal with Guyton, and he might have gotten a poke to the face as Guyton was going past him. No, I think he, got, he did. He got clipped probably with an elbow as Guyton was going to his lane. Well, you see Guyton go up. First see with the elbow. Second, he's inside tight on defense. Indiana, number 25. That happens particularly with a right-handed shooter. You get too tight with them, and they start toward the basket. You're subject to that kind of play. And Bradford call for the foul. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's not anything to make you feel pretty good. He's He's guard injury. <laughs> A.J. Guyton's first point, best free throw shooter on the team. Second best score, just a tenth of a point behind Wrecker. Up off Gladys. Indiana had some defensive problems during the year, but they closed playing some of their better D of the year. Three of their last five opponents failed to even shoot 40% against them. If that's the case for Illinois, that will make it a tough night for the Illini. Rupaglia underneath for Hawkins, by far the biggest body out there. Yeah, but Kapalia is being so active. He's putting a lot of pressure on the front court of Indiana, and that's how Fess Hawkins gets over. Bob Turner just does get it before it's over and back. And this up to help him out. That was by no stretch artistic. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to figure out what they're doing, and I think it's still credited for Illinois and what they're doing defensively. Shot clock winding down on Turner, spots Gladness, and it counts. All right, not the pretty possession the way they might have drawn it up, but it works and they might get three out. Well, even more importantly, Bradford may have picked up the second foul here early because there's a ball fake by Gladness, and they call coming on the backside from Bradford, the leading scorer. Ball fake gets Kropalli out of the way, and the official saw it from the other side, and they just called Bradford for his second with 16 to go. Gladness with his first three points. Lon Kruger can't deal for long without Bradford. Indiana by four. For game, but he's already picked up his second personal. It wouldn't be here without him. Last night, six of seven threes, 22 points in the three-point win over Minnesota. And he came in tonight when just 12 points from an Illinois freshman scoring record for a single season. Obviously tough to get that while he sits on the bench, but he's a guy, once they, they tried him, as we talked about earlier, at the point guard, once they put him back to two, which is more of a natural position for him, he seemed to flourish because he didn't have to worry so much about getting everybody else involved. So they go with walk-on sophomore, Nate Mast for Bradford. Johnson spots Krupalia open underneath the bucket. After some pretty tough defense by Indiana, that was some nice patience by the, on the part of Illinois. 1-2-2 two, two zone. Now, Turner is a guy that can shoot shots. Across court to Gladness. Out for a three. Wrecker. Richardson 
Ends up with it. Is fouled by Hawkins from behind. All four fouls so far have all been against the Illini. Well, you need some recognition. See, Johnson and, and right there fighting his Luke record. But watch what Johnson does. He turns and just fires it out of there to Kropalia. Nice presence. Johnson will make shots. He, he, he is a freshman, and he'll make freshman mistakes, but he'll do some things that shows you flashes of his potential to be a pretty good player in this league. Probably learned by watching his brother Brian, who last year finished up his career for the Illini. What a start by Richardson. Seven points. Indiana by four. Richardson averages only four per game. Johnson has Wrecker gambled for the steal, misses, and Wrecker hustles down, ends up with the rebound, is fourth already. Indiana having a tough time recognizing where the gaps are in the offense. Illinois forces some long Hoosier possessions. Down to the lane goes Turner. Not enough arc on that one. Rebounded by Kupalia. Led the Illini in rebounding this freshman year. That was good defense or, and a bad decision by, I thought, Turner to try to take a running shot in the middle of a zone. Sergio McClain looked for a call. Might have gotten away with shuffling with his feet. You know, I've watched him over the years. And Sergio McClain is struggling with, in high school, he's about 6'4 and about 230 with overpowering people in high school. And he's gotten to a level now where guys are as strong as he is and some bigger and some have better skills. And he's just got to make that adjustment. Hawkins couldn't get it along the baseline. Early in the year, they were calling McClain at point as they were trying to bring Bradford along. Turner with the miss. Bradford not a high school point either. They were expecting Frank Williams to be the point guard, but uh, he was qualified by one point on his ACT, so he comes in next year. Bradford gets to play his natural spot. And it works out, though. It'll be a good deal because you got a partial qualifier in Williams, so he's able to practice with the team, though he's not able to play. Very much like Corey Bradford did last year. So it makes that transition a little easy. Yeah, Bradford learned uh, alongside... Matt Heldman, Kevin Turner, some of the seniors who left last year. Hawkins and Kripaldia will leave here. Robert Archibald, freshman from Paisley, Scotland, has come in. Chuku Debe has returned. Luke Mass fouled by record. Tomorrow, championship week on ESPN2 begins at 2 p.m. Eastern. 13 and a half minutes to go in the first half. Illinois hanging in within four against the third-seeded Hoosiers. Leotis Brown in for the first time, and he goes right to work as a three-point opportunity. I think that's a good offensive possession there, obviously, because they get a score. But Cleotis Brown on that spot is difficult to handle. He got it, threw it back out, and was able to get the move this time before Larry Richardson, who doubled the first time, could get there. And a pretty good pass by Chuka Debe to throw it back in as Cleotis Brown repositioned and got the basket and the foul. Brown coming off the bench tonight because he re-injured an ankle in the win last night over the Golden Gophers. Everybody heard it last week, but coming off the bench here. After Lucas Johnson started in his place, Johnson's still in. 15-13 game. Cross court for Guyton. And now Richardson in a crowd. And he knocked it out. And I like the defense that the Illini are playing. I mean, they've been solid. Every shot Indiana's taken has been contested as a rule. Lon Cooper has his guys' hands active in their man-to-man -man and in, even in their zone. Talked about 20, 20 win seasons for night. Lon Cooper's won 20 now in four different places, including his first two years at Indiana. At the Illinois, Illinois. Florida, <laughs> Texas Pan American, Kansas State as well. Not there for Brown that time. A.J. Guyton blowing past Nate Mast. Offensive foul. That's what I was talking about, solid defense. I mean, they're in position all the time. A.J. Guyton gets a nice move, but you see Kripalia standing there. There's nowhere to go. Fisher's still over right there. Robert Archibald. Standing at his path to draw the offensive foul. 
freshmen up and down this roster for Illinois. One senior, Arius Davis, who plays very little. Brown and Chuku Debe and Brian Campbell, who's been hurt most of the year, the only juniors. So they like their future. They can't wait for it to get here. This has been a difficult year, 12 and 17. Yeah, it's been a learning experience. You've got young players, and that's, you'll have that kind of situation. Leotis Brown, very aggressive coming off the bench. He's their best offensive player on the floor, and that's really who they'll try to run the ball to. Eight minutes gone, tied at 15. First tie tonight. Michael Lewis makes his first appearance. Sets up a three by Guyton. A.J. still looking for his first basket. And it's McLean against Rucker to give the Illini the lead. And actually, I thought that was a good play by McLean and bad defense by Indiana. Nobody picked up McLean from the time he got the rebound on the other end. Lewis in for Richardson. All the way short over Robert Archibald. Every minute that goes by should mean more confidence for Illinois, and that won't hurt either. McLean, back-to-back, -back, they lead by four. That was a very confident shot taken by McLean. So Illinois heating up, and Indiana has missed seven straight shots, and McLean will be called for the reach against Richardson. Tell you what, McLean has been playing well. I, I think he felt he could sneak in there and get that steal, but that's not a foul you want on Larry Richardson. He's missed his last two and is shooting the ball probably just outside of his range. Richardson uh, closed in good form. He had his uh, best game of his career three games ago against Michigan. 18 points, 12 rebounds. 10 points per game over the last five for Richardson. Okay, he got a lot of confidence and has been told consistently by the coaching staff that he should set screens, but when there's an opportunity to take a look at a shot, that he should do that. And we saw in the last two possessions, he was looking to get it airborne. Leotis Brown in the Illinois with an assist from Sergio McLean giving Indiana all they want so far. Well, they needed to find somebody else to score on the glass and left uh, some prints. Illinois 19-17. And Kirk Haston in for the first time with a heavily wrapped hand. Hawkins blocked twice by Richardson. But it's picked up by Krupalia and then knocked away by Lewis. One of the best defensive stands so far by Indiana. Now they got to go to work on this end. In the seventh straight after they hit five of the first seven over the first four minutes. Traveling. Got to be able to go up with some real strength and power inside. Going up that time was Hawkins trying to get it. You see Richardson get it twice, and Indiana came away with the ball on the possession, but they called traveling on Hastings. Last time down, the Illini had their first turnover of the game, so they've been pretty close to flawless on the offensive end. A requirement tonight. It needs to continue for them. That one deflected by Dane Fife and saved by McLean to Mass to Brown. Plenty of time. Eight on the shot clock. They turn it over again. What, what really kind of gave him the bad play is McLean made the mistake of getting the ball as though it hadn't been tipped, which it had been by Indiana, which means he could have gotten it comfortably, comfortably and just settled down back on the other end. Here's the freshman five from McDonald's All-America from Clarkston, Michigan. Leaves it behind him for record. Wrecker only two points so far. Guyton only one. And that pass tipped out by Kukolia. Six and a half minutes without a basket for Indiana. They've had a tough time, and Bob Knight knows they've got to find a way to penetrate that zone defense that uh, Illinois has started to play. And I think it's a pretty good deal by uh, Tom Kruger to play it, because what you find is you can't get anything inside, and that's what Richardson was doing. Trouble getting points outside all year. Inside's been a different story. Bad pass. They turn it over for the fourth time. 
And their drought continues. Johnson back on the floor for the Illini. Hawkins tries to stretch his range a bit. And Krupalia outbattles Haston. He's just tough. Three-point try, Lucas Johnson. That's what I'm telling you about Johnson. Every now and then he'll do that. But in Kapalia, and, and I've been able to see him play both of his good games against Indiana, he just, he's a lot tougher on the inside. Now they find the angle they've been looking for inside for Richardson, and he draws the contact by Krupalia. They call it on Hawkins, though. Let's see. Hawkins it is with his second. Second personal. Well, I think that's kind of, at this point, though Hawkins has given some good, good inside play. I think I'd rather have it on him than Capalia. Larry Richardson is the Indiana offense. That's been the whole game. Six of six free throws, ten points. Hit only 56% of his free throws this year. Responding to the extra playing time. That one rebounded by Chuku Debe. Illinois by four, 8.45 to go in the half. Johnson, as record, lost his footing. Couldn't burn him with a three. Archibald, stripped by record. And in transition, record out of control. Hopes he got fouled, and he did. Tomorrow on, e on ESPN. Third point for Wrecker. Gladness in for Richardson, and there is a large contingent of Indiana fans here. They give Richardson a nice hand, and he has a problem with the squall of his back that they'll check. Yeah, he is not somebody they can't afford to, to be without. He started limping after he uh, got fouled on the last play. Indiana substitution, number 25, A.J. He's carried him to this point. Wrecker sitting. Shuki Bebe finds Nate Mast. Mast had played one year, one minute this year, before this year. Got all the time he could have ever dreamed of. 272 minutes. This year, backing up Bradford. Another loose ball picked up by Chuku Debe. And he's fouled with the shot clock down to three. Call it on Michael Lewis. He was shooting the ball. And I, I think they, they give him for shooting the ball. Or they're giving it to him on the side. He's trying to say he was shooting it. I agree with you. Three seconds on the shot clock. You got to believe he was at least trying to get it in. There's a timeout. 7.58 to go. A timeout in Chicago and a surprising first half. It's Illinois on top by two. Lead for the Illini. Let's see how limited Haston may be with a broken bone in the left hand. He, he looks to be limited in that. He's not trying to be really accurate. Sets him up, crowded on the baseline by Archibald. Shot clock at 10 for Guyton. That masked off his feet. First field goal, finally, for AJ. Now, that was a big-time move there. Because he took him and just jab-stepped him right and took one hard dribble left and even went up in his face to get that one to go. They've gone 8-42 without a field goal. Guyton finally ends the long Indiana drought. Tough shot. Sergio McLean, short rebound, Chuku Debe. Illinois winning the board so far, 13-10, and six offensive rebounds really helping their pass. Yeah, that, that's really been their difference. Stop and go drive by McLean, and I think another reach in on Michael Lewis. Lewis picks up his second. They finally get Corey Bradford back in, and when he left with two fouls, you didn't really like 
The immediate future for Illinois, and not only have they uh, played fine without him, they're actually in control of the game. Well, very much like they did when they played the game against Minnesota, what they, it, you know, we'll take Quincy Lewis out of the equation. They've been able to get somebody else to contribute in the scoring. And so not having Bradford on the floor has made them look for different options, and Lewis Johnson has been one of those options. Here's the guy who's contributed, and he follows his own miss, has 10 points. Shot 27% this year, averaged three points per game. And Indiana has been fairly more productive from the field than they've been mostly for Richardson on the foul line. Richardson spent time stretching out what appeared to be lower back spasms during the last time out and has not come back in. We hit six minutes to go, a line eye by five. Gonna have to shoot the ball. Three to shoot for Wrecker, who called you there for the board. Good defense by the line on. Five boards for the near who called you. And it was good defense because they, first of all, they kept Indiana with the ball on one side of the court. And if you don't reverse it against the zone, you don't have much chance to be able to penetrate. Imagine now to watch him play, but they actually thought they'd have to redshirt to call you this year. They sat him out the first seven games before they saw how well he was playing in practice and figured, let's get him in now. Another offensive rebound. Johnson, four to call you, couldn't get it. Oh, they had it, too. It makes a really good pass after a tough rebound. Five sets up, Guyton, three in the corner. And a tough three, too. His 200th career three-pointer, first all-time in Indiana history. Guyton gets the ball. I mean, he has to shoot it quick because you can see coming out at him with a lot of speed. It's Scrapolia, but Guyton was able to get it to go down. And Chukudebe slow. Getting up. And he'll have to limp off to the bench and be replaced by Fess Hawkins. Well, he was complaining. I think one of the Indiana players either pushed him or something because he complained pretty, pretty harshly to the official about why he was on the floor. Through Paulia, he's hit a three already today. Not quite by Brown. Hawkins follows it. Another offensive rebound. Quick hands by Hawkins. Lots of different sources of offense this half. Hawkins with six off the bench. That's offensive. Well, did they give him that? Yeah, that's offensive. The ball you was there, and Dane Fife was out of control. Now, Victor Chukudebe was complaining to the official, and you see he's in the center of the screen, and Haston has him right there, so that they're both in position. Now, if he's calling that a foul, he's in the wrong conference. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Victor is a big, strong guy. He's in the wrong conference. That, that is not a foul here. And he's a junior who ought to know that in this conference by now. Rupaldia. Leotis Brown transferred to Southern Union Community College in Alabama. Didn't a lot of necessary offense this year. Missed three by Krupalia. Haston fouled after the rebound. The place where I think Illinois is having great success, they either can do one or two things, and they're pretty good for Lawrence Kruger. They have been able to Illinois post up with Cleotis Brown. The other thing that they've been able to do is, is they can penetrate off the dribble on Indiana and create shots. And they're going to have to figure out how to do that without Chris Hawkins, because I believe that was his third. And his three. Chukudebe immediately right back in. He'll be joined by Nate Mass. They got all they want out of the guy, Corey Bradford. They want to get him out of the, the half they can. Corey Bradford without that third foul. Illinois has been able to build this lead with nothing so far from the free throw line. Haston misses the front end. Indiana, 10 of 13. Illinois, 0 for 1 from the free throw line. Doing it the hard way. Turn around by Chuku Debe. Rebound Haston. All alone for a three. That normally automatic for Guyton. 
it, you're right, but I, he caught that and, and really didn't have to, but he got just shot it to get it out of his hands quickly. So he never was a, never set himself up. And the three and a half minutes, Leotis Brown. See again, that's another off the dribble play. They've excelled at that. Six for Brown. Who had started every game this year until tonight. Wrecker came back down with it. Matt's traveling. You know what? Mass did that. He charged that record quick enough that he couldn't remember what he wanted to do. Johnson has a good idea what he wants to idea what he wants to do. He wants to help his team win, so he's chasing down, putting in loose balls. Off the bench, not starting. Cleotis Brown ate the glass so far, and that total of nine offensive rebounds creating a lot of points in the paint for them. Yeah, they've been able to be active in there, Dave, and it's been a real positive, had a positive effect because they don't have to worry as much about trying to get it out of their offense if they can throw it up there and get it down. Indiana, on the other part, has not done one fundamental thing, and that's block out. It's the most obvious area where Illinois was better than Indiana during this year. A much better rebounding team, and guys coming off the bench scoring have really helped their cause, too. They've mashed into the act. The lead now eight for the Illini. Well, we were just talking it, it, during the timeout right there as uh, Jimenez just gets called for a foul. Illinois is so much more of a positive, aggressive offensive team than they used to be. They used to be defensively aggressive. Now they're offensively aggressive, and that credit has to go to Lon Kruger and these young kids. Again, I talked about you can beat Indiana off the dribble. There's really no screen there. A.J. Guyton just gets beat, and Mass takes a, a, actually a difficult shot and makes it look easy. Then after turning it over, Jimenez fouls Brown. And Illinois still without a point from the line. He can't catch his own travel because he caught his own ball. Yeah, you can't catch your own. I thought at one point that uh, Haston might have got his hand on it. Two regular season meetings, both won by Indiana, but neither was a blowout. They won by nine at home. They won in overtime by six in the final regular season game for the Atlanta last Wednesday, 70 to 64 in Champaign. They've had trouble from the start tonight. Well, you know, with one, one thing, you don't blow Illinois out very often. So to score enough to blow them out. Wrecker, three-pointer, shot clock running down for Luke. Yeah, that's a tough shot, though. They make it, but it's a three-pointer with Scrapoli at 6'7", six, 6'8", six, flying at you. That's pretty good defense. You'll take your chances on that. Just the second three for the Hoosiers. That's it down to five. McLean for Kropalia, who tonight has fallen in love with the three-pointer. He was four for 11 during the year. He's taken three in his head. Did make one of them. Record for Guyton. He's got a three and another one. Starting to get a little float down. You can see it. Illinois needs to be a little more patient on their offensive end. A quick six-point run by Indiana. On the record, Guyton bounce. McLean forced to give it up to Chuku Debe. Gladness with the kick out for Guyton and a chance to tie or low for Indiana. Stop and go drive by Guyton at a time. Boy, he shook him up with a little bit of a hesitation. Got to get some shots. You better make them. Guyton is one, and so is Wrecker, that if you get out and let him set up, he can make some tough shots on you. So they get in the ball back. He shoots it over traffic. And then you get a chance because Wrecker pushes the ball up. The defense collapses. You see, in rhythm, A.J. Guyton knocked down that three-pointer. He got fouled, taking the ball to the basket. They're in the bonus. And again, they missed the front end. Guyton, their best free throw shooter during the season, but one of three in this first half. Knocked out by Wrecker, who hoped he'd deflected it off Johnson. Couldn't quite convince Tom Rucker of that. He was working hard at it, I tell you. Mast for a three. Never had a chance. And it went off Wrecker's back as he was falling out of bounds. I actually thought it got partially blocked, too, so I thought it was should have been Illinois' ball either way. 
21 on the shot clock for Illinois. Heading down to the final minute of a half. They've led most of the way by as many as eight points. Sergio McLean starting to come along with his offense as well. And a word of warning now for Sam Licklider and Lucas Johnson. I mean, and, and that was a, a real, real stern conversation with him that time. What happens is you'll see th there's right here, you'll see an elbow. One by Guyton, and then the official, what he did was he caught Lucas Johnson throwing the, uh, the, the, the elbow. He, well, he missed Guyton taking his shot. Don't they always? Guyton stepped on the sideline. Well, that would explain the uh, look of bafflement by Lucas Johnson at, at the the length and the intensity of that luxury guy from Sam Lickler. Yeah, because all he wanted to try to make with the point was, I got it first. Which does not excuse it, but he definitely got it first. Archibald, tough pass inside for Johnson. Missed it, got another offensive rebound over to Archibald and the double dribble. But they still got another offensive rebound. Coming up, the 7-Up Halftime Report with ESPN News. They'll have the news on the surprising elimination of number 7 Cincinnati in Conference USA. One more automatic bid has been already today. So the plot thickens. With each passing minute, shot clock off. Ten seconds. Record and Guyton taking turns down to five. Record a long three-pointer. Illinois will go to the locker room with a four-point lead. The 11th seeded Illinois fighting Illini, who got here by a upset win over number six Minnesota last night. They're up on third seeded Indiana, 35-31 here in the United Center. ESPN News coming up. Half here in the United Center. Welcome again, Dave Barnett and Quinn Buckner. If I tell you Corey Bradford plays six minutes, does not score in the first half, and Guyton and Wrecker have normal halves, you probably come back to me with Indiana must be dominated. Or they got a lot of help on the Illinois side from somebody else, Dave, and that really turned out to be the case. They looked to make a little bit of change in what they got with it was when Bradford went out. Lucas Johnson became very active. He was able to get out, knock down threes. Indiana didn't get to him. And then I frankly just thought he just out-hustled and outplayed the inside players for Indiana in every play. So he'll go up and take this shot, miss it, chase it down, and put it back in the basket. He had 10 points, makes a solid pass for, for Paul Year. So they were able to get guys involved differently. But more importantly, on the rebound situation, 26 for uh, Illinois, 15 for Indiana. 14 defensive rebounds, 12 offensive, and Indiana just having a total of 15 rebounds. So almost at the defensive side of rebounding, Illinois has Indiana beat. 14 nothing off the bench. We called you, Bradford, who is back in. He sat most of the half because of two fouls, and he's immediately rejected by A.J. Guyton. I thought Corey Bradford should come. He should let the game come to him. Here he tries to take it. And A.J. Guyton is anticipating that. What you like to do in those situations is just wait. As you see Johnson on the side, knock down another one. Third three-pointer for a guy who made nine all year. He's got a career-high 13 points. And the lead is seven and a pass through the hands of Guyton. Well, they didn't get anything from Bradford right away, but we talked about him at the half, and Johnson picks up where he left off in the first half with his three-pointer. He did this last night to Minnesota, 12 points in that one. And he has kind of personified the development of the Illinois team, a, a freshman who has just gotten better and better as the year has gone on. That one comes up short. But he ends up with the rebound and then throws it off the shoulder of Kupon. Yeah, but they are applauding the effort, and I think that's what you have to do. He'll make a better decision the next time he goes on the floor, not trying to be so quick with the pass. You make that kind of effort, you want to at least save the ball. Try to get it inside for Gladness. 
Kupalga over the back, his first. Illinois took control of this game with Indiana with eight minutes and 43 seconds without a field goal in the first half. They had a 16 to seven run during that span, led by as many as eight. Hoosiers had a late run on back-to-back -back threes by Ruth Recker and A.J. Guyton. Illini held him off, though. Guyton with a three-pointer here. And knocked out by Richardson. They were able to make a good entry pass inside to Gladness, but Gladness is a guy that needs to go to his left shoulder. On the right block, if you get it behind the backboard, he has nowhere to turn, and he struggles just to get it out. Richardson back in. He didn't play after he experienced some lower back spasms after leading the Hoosiers with 10 points in the first half in his 11 minutes before he went out. And they missed him while he was out. It did because Haston came in. Though Haston got four rebounds, he wasn't able to give them anything offensive. And that's one of Kirk Haston's strengths is his offense. Johnson moving on Gladness. Eight to shoot for Bradford. Get to him. Bradford gets open, gets on the board, finally. Yeah, you got to get to him because he can score off the dribble. Largest lead for the Illini. They have it at 9. 40 to 31. Gladness back out and three seconds. One pass, two minutes. Three second violation. That Bradford gets a nice screen that Richardson comes off too soon because Bradford's been out of the game. Richardson isn't thinking of him as a scorer because Johnson has had such a good offensive output. That leading scorer, you got to know, he's looking to get it up anytime he can. Best of the year, the Big Ten averaged 15 per game, far and away the top scorer for Illinois, and a terrible pass stolen by Michael Lewis. Another open look for a three and another miss by Guyton, pulled down by Kupolia. And they've got numbers going back the other way. Johnson goes baseline on Richardson, offensive foul. Now Lucas Johnson looked at the fish as though to say he was under the basket. So Victor Chukudebe comes over and says he was under the basket. I mean, they're really starting to support one another, and that's a good sign. You don't like to see them complain to the officials, but they're supporting one another. Richardson, first points on the fifth trip down the floor this half for Indiana. <laughs> now Bradford inside for McLean. Play just too big for Lewis, and he draws another foul down there. So on Gladness, who came over to help. Indiana having a tough time finding offense, but Richardson flashes in there, able to get the ball and turn away from the defense. Kapal, you could do nothing. And we see Lynn Washington for the first time. He comes in for Gladness. Washington got very little time late in the year. Didn't play at all two of their final three games. Good call. Another one on Michael Lewis. Don't forget Frackage with Chris Dick, Bigger, and Jay Phillips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. will be there somewhere playing for an improved oh, oh. They can go deep in this tournament. Bradford knifes through traffic and hits a three. And a little entanglement after. It went through. Johnson separated from Wrecker and Lewis. Well, they definitely had it going on, going into a little entanglement, and I saw Luke Recker involved in it. We'll see it. It should be on the back side, the left side of the screen. They're down. Recker takes a shot. Now, I don't know what happened prior to that, but he takes a shot, and then he takes another shot, and he's saying he can't get his leg out of there, and Lucas may, may be holding his leg, but the shot was uncalled for. Tom Rucker alert and jumps right in there. Guy long three-pointer. Can't get one. Out of bounds to Illinois. Let's look again at what happened last time down. Well, something happened for him to get down, and that's what I'd like to see because if, there is no need for all of this that goes after that. 
and you can see Rekker's trying to say he won't let him get his leg out and he from in between uh, uh, Johnson's leg. Radford. Oh. Out of bounds off Indiana. Indiana got away with that one. All right, they're in into each other and they both go down. And then they get tangled, but the officials are right on top of it. Girl, foul called an inbounds play. Dane five for Indiana picks up his second. 43-33 Illinois. They have avoided what almost got a beat last night. They led by as many as 22 in the first half against Minnesota and came out flat. They scored only three points in the first 9-24 of the second half last night. They barely survived that. They've come out and played uh, maybe their best offense of the game in these early moments of this second half. I don't doubt that having beat Minnesota gives them a tremendous amount of confidence. In addition to having played Indiana just last week and then been able to play them to the degree that Indiana has to beat them in overtime. They found out they can post up if they have to McLean. And that gives them an option too. Good pass. Rupalia inside for Chukudebe. And the lead grows to 12 for the first time. I mean, a really solid play. They open this second half with a 10 2 run. Indiana can get nothing consistent on offense, shooting 40%. Wrecker comes up short. Richardson tips it. Picked up by Johnson. He has gotten to every loose ball, or so it seems. And a collision again between Johnson and Wrecker. Called on Luke Wrecker. Well, there's a lot of activity going on. I think Johnson gets away with a foul, actually, on this, because what he does is he goes a second time, and he takes people out, but then that foul there is clearly on Luke Wrecker. Johnson actually was able to get, move another Indiana player, moving clearly out of bounds. <laughs> Johnson stripped this time cleanly by record. Nice lead pass. Lewis almost carried it. Oh, foul by Richardson. You were right, though. He did. I thought he had a carry on it, too. Indiana foul number 33. Richardson picks up his first team skip. Illinois substitutions, number four. See how close this was to a turnover. Robert Real close. It was close. What he, he let the ball go and then just kind of trailed it down and didn't shoot it very confidently because he looked at the Illinois defender coming at him. Over five minutes now, and Indiana's man is just two points this half. It was a long time to go by Larry Richardson. But I think his was even more important for Illinois. First person. We got six. Almost 14.32 to go. That was Indiana 16 foul. So very soon, you know, next while you're looking at a team putting themselves in a penalty situation. Which brings up another good point. Illinois has done this without a single point from the free throw line. Outscored 10-0. That last foul, Lynn Washington with his first. Here's Bradford making up for lost time. Bess Hawkins crashes in. Kicks it out for Johnson. Inside, Archibald. Oh, nice shot. Was able to take that one with the left to get it to go in very smoothly. 14-point lead. It is just about out of hand for Indiana. They can't get anything established at all. There's a putback by Washington. Well, they had it sometimes. They, they really haven't solved this zone down here, Dave, and that's why they haven't been able to get anything. Walker now gambling. They are committed to getting the ball out of Lucas Johnson's hand. Double teaming when they can. That's more, yeah, it's gambling, but that, that, it's more of a desperate defense. Bad looking miss by McLean, and he came down awkwardly. Maybe he hurt his left ankle, it looks like. Look at that. He's got a little bit of calf muscle problem. It might be what a bad miss can do to you, though. Number 21, Robert oh, he's got a cramp. First person, third I just saw him tell Corey Bradford he's got a cramp. You can look at his uh, calf muscle and see that it, it won't flex. So Cleotis Brown will come in as they take a look at McLean over on the Illinois bench. Improved shooting this half by Illinois. Up by a dozen. Kirk Haston in for the Hoosiers and hits his first 
from up high. They got plays inside. You know how Indiana got back in the game, Dave, was they shot three-pointers. You know the rule on three-pointers. You just, it, it, it may help you, but it'll bite you. They may shoot you in, but they may shoot you out, too. Yeah, you've got to be on all cylinders to stay up with that. Take him. Life knocked it away from Brown. Hawkins picked it up. Plenty of time. 14 to shoot. And he can take Lewis. He's beating him twice any way he wanted to beat him. Redford spin move. High arch. Couldn't get it down. Indiana smelling a run. Wrecker. That would have been a two. Rebound foul is going to go on Kirk Haston. And Indiana over the limit with their seven. Indiana foul number 35, Kirk Haston. First personal, seven team foul. Bonus. And the officials double checking to make sure that is seven against the team. First on Haston. Knight trying to get a combination going. He's going to go back to Rob Turner, who started, didn't play a whole much, uh, play, play much, or get much established in the first half. Hawkins hits the first. I'm like, you. I mean, and, and, and Bob Knight is just trying to find anybody he can get with some sense of unity where they can get five guys that are thinking the same way. I haven't seen very much of that on the floor on the part of Indiana. Illinois has one concerted thought. Let's make sure we get effort plays, and all of those, I think, have gone to the Illini, and they should, because Johnson, Paul, you, you know, Hawkins, you can go down the line. They've had some great effort plays made by uh, the Illini. Mostly by their bench. Eight points off the bench for Hawkins. Lynn Washington gets the roll. On a nice pass return. Four for Washington. Hawkins challenging Kirk Haston. And he'll go back to the line. Hey, 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 hey. All year, the one thing Indiana Illinois did pretty consistently was Haston. rebound. They were about Second plus three and a half for the year. Indiana rebounded well when they won, when they didn't. It was a big problem for them, and it's a huge problem for them tonight. They, the problem has been even compounded by the fact that it have been mostly offensive rebounds, which means guys aren't getting a body on people. And in Illinois, I think it's been, they've stayed active. They've been hard to block out. Four for four free throws by Hawkins. That offensive rebounding, 13-3 Illinois as they continue to work on the cramp of McLean. Haston flashes into the middle. Can't get it down. Tip back out to Fife. Resets with Lewis. See, uh, all, Indiana thinks they have something outside, and then before you know it, they get somebody in their face. Robert Archibald poked that with Lewis. It was an ill-conceived pass, and it was poorly executed. And that is a deadly combination, <laughs> yeah. usually. He had no chance because he just kind of lofted it in there. a nice play by Hawkins. Knew he couldn't stay in bounds, but he threw it out off Haston. Timeout, 11.41 to go. It's still Illinois by 12. Surprise. Today it's held for him, but this is a big surprise in the making. Advancing to the semis, Michigan State, Ohio State, Wisconsin, which shot a season-best 63% the first game this afternoon against Iowa. Evan Eschmeyer with a season-high 30, but not quite enough for Northwestern. They fell 61-59 to top-seeded Michigan State earlier today. Michigan State will play Wisconsin tomorrow. Ohio State awaits the winner of this game. If you know they had to figure it would be Indiana. It may still be, but they have work in front of them. Shot clock down to two. Brown missed the three-pointer. And Archibald takes it away again from Haston. And draws a foul. You talked about effort plays. Guys in orange are making every effort play. Oh, they really are. They're getting to the loose ball. I mean, Archibald was, I thought he was going to let the play go away. It's a tough rebounding situation here. You see his tap. And Haston has it. And he just, Archibald, good hands, just knocks it up and then gets the ball. And they call a foul. And I, I had a tough time seeing that. Moment on Haston looked like, if anything, contact was made by Lewis. And Archibald, no good on the front end. And both Guyton and Record on the bench. 
Aston and Turner both miss. The Indiana starters this half have combined for two points. Oh, that was by Richardson. Bradford, second three. Got first leg set out with two fouls most of the first half. Right back comes Lewis. Bradford, all eight of his points this half since he set most of the first half. Record, guy. Neither one has scored this half. Hawkins on the back door from Archibald. Archibald, good high, low pass. Hawkins can hold that position. Timeout, Indiana. As Bob Knight gives Kirk Haston a little clinic. Well, he's giving him a clinic about allowing Fess Hawkins to hold him off where he can catch the ball and get easily to the bat. Thing with Jared Odell now checking in. He only played two minutes over the last two games. But the combination has not presented itself, and so he's going deeper than he probably ever planned to. Well, I tell you what he's been, what they've had to face is they, what Illinois has is kind of like a two-one-two -two zone, and they, they move the middle guy back and forward depending on where the most effect is coming. And Indiana hadn't made anything from the outside. That's short. And up and over by Lewis. So they haven't made anything on the outside except when Kirk Haston was in and he was the one player that could make something in the middle but he didn't defend so he got taken out. Under 10 minutes to go. Brown on a post up. Like what he had with record back outside now for McLean. The Illinois Mr. Basketball, four-time state champ in Peoria, five on the shot clock. Bradford down to three, lost it out of bounds. Not in a tough position, but you were talking about Sergio McLean played for his dad, Wayne McLean in Peoria at Peoria Manual in Illinois. Learned how to win. Luger says he's a winner whether he's shooting well or not. Three-pointer record, still scoreless this half, and Krupalia took an extra step. Says, yeah, I did it because the guy hooked me. See if he has an argument. Well, he grabs the rebound, and he gets the ball, and he got, he got tagged. Odo had him. I'm not sure it was enough to get him to come backwards, but Odo definitely got him, so they could have made that call. Set play alley-oop for Turner. Worked pretty well, Rob Turner with 4.56.43. This is where Indiana's having trouble. I, they just have a tough time stopping it. Well, maybe Old will be a good luck charm. He was instrumental in a come from behind win about a month ago at Penn State. Has played very little since then. Let's go above the rim, brought to you by Nortel. I thought this was a clean block. I mean, because he's left-handed as Lewis, and he comes. And he, and he did. He got it clean. He just he came first with the right hand and ends up getting it with the left hand. It, it was a solid block. Number 24, Mike Lewis. They call it his third on Chuku Debe. Michael Lewis has played some of the best ball of his Indiana career coming into this tournament. Last 11 games, about seven assists per game. These are their first free throws this half. He has only two points tonight. Three assists. And now his third point. Nick Knight trying to get Tom Rucker's attention, but he's all the way across the floor. He is. He's saying that they should have shot the foul that... Uh, as he was the Tom Rucker was holding the ball that Illinois started having a conference and he was saying shoot the ball. McLean quickly down can't get the roll. Saved by Lewis. Did he get it off Hawkins? When we hit it what they're trying to say is it hit Lewis back. But what happens as soon as he hit Hawkins Hawkins was already out of bounds. That's, what the, that's the way the official looked at it. As soon as he hits him, see, Hawkins is out of bounds. So as soon as he hits him, it's dead. And Lewis had not yet come down out of bounds. So a nice play by Lewis to get the possession back for Indiana. They're down 11, 8.40 to go. 
Send some urgency. Three-quarter Guyton. Well, we'll see if their offense will find a way to kick the defense in gear. Solid 22nd timeout by Lon Cooper. At last, a run by the Hoosiers. Guyton's been on quite a run. His 14th straight game now in double figures. Best run of his career. Well, they give it to Guyton, and he looked at it once before, but you don't come out and close on him like that. Bradford came a little late. But remember, Bradford has two fouls, didn't want to subject himself to potentially that third foul. Indiana's been here before. Five wins after they trail by double figures. And they've also been in a lot of tough contests, too, though, Dave. But they've been in seven overtime games this year. And I don't think that's ever happened in Bob Knight's uh, coaching career. Definitely not. It's a Big Ten record. It's one off the NCAA record. And out of the question here. A little over eight minutes to go. They have it down to eight with a 7-0 run. After Indiana had its largest lead at 15. And that Wrecker Johnson matchup explodes again, and this time they get Wrecker for uh, the No, they didn't. They called a double foul, and it's a good call. They're both in there flopping and flailing, and I think Tom Rucker does a good job. Watch, here's one. This is not where it's called. Now, now they're flailing, and you see they both go down, both of them acting, and Tom Rucker standing right behind them and calls a double foul. I think that's a solid call. For Wrecker, it's his third. For Johnson, yeah, it's his second. Foul, Bob. Double foul, offense keeps the time state. Yeah, they, this, is the, this is what the ruling was about. It doesn't go to the arrow. The double foul, the offense keeps the ball, and that's what they were, they were doing. That's the matchup I'd look at all day long. should be able to overpower Lewis, you think. Hawkins. Couldn't get it. Offensive rebound, another one. But you're right, McLean can, uh, McLean can overpower almost any one of the guards, including Rutgers. Yeah, that That's another one on Rutgers, and he has four. Four fouls on record. Sunday live at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific. Oh, Sunday, 2.30 Eastern, ABC Sports. Out goes Rutgers, replaced by Lynn Washington. Tough night for Luke Recker, only seven points, none here in the second half. Hawkins continues his career night. Excellent free throw shooting. This entire Illinois from an offensive team is playing with so much more confidence. They, they have a much better sense of where the opportunities are and, and do a better job of taking advantage of those opportunities. Lewis trying to force it inside for Washington. Not a good decision. Johnson undercut by Guyton. He is going to be just one big bruise after this game. But I don't think that matters to Johnson. I think he kind of likes no, he's those loving kind of it. He's, he's loving it. Yeah, I mean, that, that lets him know he's in the game. It's a long pass that's thrown up by Bradford. And Guyton gets there late. Looks to me, actually, that Johnson actually takes a, he takes a, fa a fall here. Because he's pretty much in position that if he had to get a, keep going, I thought he could have kept going to the basket. But he wisely goes down and the official has to make a decision on the call. The line eye in the double bonus now. Johnson, the best of a bad free throw shooting lot this year. 73%. As a team, they were just 65%. But tonight, you got Hawkins 6-6. Six of six. He's got a career high. Johnson has a career high. Three three-pointers. Part of his line tonight. Johnson now 15, lead back to 12. The three teams Illinois beat in Big Ten play, low-scoring teams, Michigan, Wisconsin, Northwestern, never beat anybody who averaged as many as 70, and Indiana led the league in scoring. Bradford Long, Johnson kept it alive, another offensive rebound. That's a team offensive rebound. I mean, they don't, they don't give it to an individual, but because the ball was kept alive, and that's the kind of play that Illinois has got to make, and they've made them. 15 offensive rebound. Total of 32. Bradford waits patiently. Now goes at that McLean Lewis matchup to Krupalga. He's fouled by Odin. 
If you can get the position, then that's what they've been able to do is get position, particularly when they throw it to Sergio McLean. He sees he's in trouble. Contact is made, and I thought Crapaglia does a good job making sure there's contact and creating the foul. Neil Crapaglia from Bosnia, but he played high school ball in Rockford, Illinois. Integrated in 1995. And has been a quick learner. The guy who was thought to be headed toward a redshirt year. He ends the year as their leading rebounder. And shooter from the field. Hawkins wouldn't give up on that one. And that's the ultimate insult for not rebounding the basketball. When you get a team and they get it on a rebound, on the uh, free throw. 16 offensive rebound. Indiana comes away with this loose ball, and Guyton is bumped to the backcourt. That'll be Bradford with his third. But his first since the first uh, six minutes of the first half when he left, basically not to return at all for the rest of the half. Even without him, they led by four. They've led by as many as 15 this half. You know, his being out was, was positive in this sense for Illinois. They figured out other options to go to. And that's how Johnson got going. I think for Paul, you became a little more incented to look for his offense. So much of the time, it's been all or nothing for Billy Bradford. That miss on a three by Odell. And they had no choice tonight. It couldn't come just from Corey Bradford. Others had to step up, and have they ever? Four shooting night for Indiana helping. Four of 18 on threes by the Hoosiers. Get near six minutes to go. Spin move counted for Sergio McLean. Well, they can get Sergio McLean posting up, but here he'll get it from Lewis. He takes one bump here, and he's so big and strong, he takes the hit strong enough to get it to go down. Let him go to his right, and he will take the spin, and Lewis tries to recover, just not big enough or strong enough. Sergio's dominated that matchup all night. That's the fourth foul on Michael Lewis. Stays in for the moment. We talked about the adjustment Sergio McLean had to make with what he does on the basketball court. And I think one of the things that's happened with this entire club and positively for Sergio McLean, the coaching staff had to figure out where's the best place to put him so they can effectively get some offense out of it. And they put him on the block, let him stay close to the basket where his strength can be of asset. Universal guys played four positions already in his young Illinois career. So that three-point play reestablishes the 15-point lead. We're under six minutes. Urgent time has arrived for Indiana. They just about can't afford any more missed possessions. Lewis sets up Jared Odell nicely. He's fouled in midair by Robert Archibald. Story all night. Second chance points by Illinois, 18 to 4. It's really hard to illustrate it much more clearly than that. <laughs> Indiana, just getting to the glass, just making the effort. Lon Cooper and his team. It, it, it is such a. a it's got a, Lon has to feel so good about where his team is emotionally. The way they were getting beat early in this season, a lot of close games. That it's hard to keep those kids, you know, confident in what they're doing. But tonight they had. Guyton steals an offensive rebound here, much needed for Indiana. After a little hit the front. The one and one. Guy who decides why not take it, not too far as it turned out. Four threes for A.J. Guy. He was standing where he almost could have caught it and stepped into a three and still been behind the line. Backdoor cut Johnson goes up on Larry Richardson in his foul. Guy, you see, he could, could have stepped into it. And, he, and, and Mass just doesn't get to him, so he raises up and fires. Lucas Johnson. Well, it's looking like if there's going to be a comeback, it's got to be AJ Guyton that engineers it. Wrecker comes back playing with four fouls. Illinois did not get a free throw in the first half, but that's another area where they've had a big advantage here in the second. Yeah, they, they start beating, you off, beating Indiana off the dribble. And Indiana from that position has got the foul because they don't have really good people, I think, 
defensively that can guard off the dribble. Johnson four for four, Hawkins six for six. McLean had a three-point play a moment ago, so the free throws keeping the margin comfortable for Illinois. As Lewis dives in, six on this half for Michael Lewis. 65-54, five minutes to go. Leonard gets Ohio State tomorrow in the semis. McLean. Archibald, one more for Archibald, foul from behind by Ogle. How about one more offensive rebound? Indiana foul on 43, Jared Odo. I mean, McLean gets the ball, and, and he takes a, a tough shot. Lewis does a pretty good job, but you see the shot go up. Keeping the ball live is Archibald. It comes back to him as it hits the rim. And standing behind him is Odo, who picks up the foul. Archibald, like to call here, got some high school ball in this country after his family moved from Scotland. He went to the St. Louis area ball in August of 1997, signed with Illinois. Bradford back in to replace Nate Mast. Like to get some uh, muscle on him. He's 6'10, but only 215. Two different halves and getting to the line. Getting to the line, you can see those numbers in. Indiana is usually a team that you know makes more foul shots than the other team shoots. But in this game, it's been more of the Illini and their toughness and ability to go to the basket. Archibald is replaced by Krupalia. 12-point game. Richardson going up on Chuku Debe and he's fouled. Championship week here on ESPN 2. Bess Hawkins for Chuku Debe. Richardson, the story for Indiana in the first half, 10 points, only two since then. He misses both feet. McLean, a quick shot, got it, felt it all the way. Yeah, you can see the rhythm in the dribble, knowing he was trying to get to the basket, feeling it. Indiana last had a lead at 15 to 13. Guyton barely gets iron out off Lewis. And the guy knows he's going to take a shot. He, he, he gets a body language about it. McLean knows right here, I'm going to take him because I see this area open up and no one came to get him. You can see on that shot, good follow through, quality results the kind you like. 11 for Sergio McLean. Back to Rucker versus Johnson. It's been full of fireworks all night. Now McLean working on Dane Fife. Nobody stopping him. He's got all of his game going. <laughs> he looks over at you like, you getting this? You following me? Well, he's got to be happy because he really hadn't, offensively, he hadn't been able to do what he could do in high school. And this is one of the days that obviously it's gone well for him. And he's a sophomore. Richardson with 14, but they're down by 14. And time is running out on Indiana. 3.33 to go. Hawkins. They just keep pounding it and pounding it. They either get shots or they get free throws. They get positive results, and that's all you want out of them. Indiana foul number 43, Jared Ola. This on Jared Ola, his third. Making his point to Dane Fife. The point he's making, it, it looks to me as though they're having so much trouble guarding inside that if the ball goes inside, I think he's telling Dane Fife, Fife that they have to go and clamp down on the ball to force Illinois to throw the ball back out. Look at this ball. McLean's been fighting leg cramps. Well, those plays by Toyota's ground. Those leg cramps go away when you start, you know, that jump shot starts feeling pretty good to you. Illinois fans here. Quick miss by Larry Richardson. Toyota Brown with the rebound again. They get to the loose ball. They have been uh, a little too much for Indiana to handle. The determination, the quickness. Indiana has not had an answer for that. They have not come close to answering Johnson and Hawkins and their surprising contributions. Michael Lewis fouls out. 
12 for 12 from the foul line. 33 points, perfect free throw shooting. They averaged nine points between them during the season. Hawkins six, Johnson three. 73-56, under three minutes. Luke Jimenez, the man that replaces Lewis after fouling out. Jimenez in for Richardson, the only consistent score Indiana's had. He has 16 two off his career high. Particularly on the, yes, only consistent, but particularly on the inside. Indiana never solved that zone. When they start flexing the one, the, what in the one, two, two, the guy up and back, and Indiana just never figured out how to get him the ball. Indiana picks up his fourth coming up next here on ESPN 2, NBA tonight. Two minutes, 32 seconds left in this one. I guess those who saw the uh, two regular season meetings might not be this shocked. Indiana won them both, but they didn't win either one easily. And the last one last week, they took uh, Illinois to overtime. Indiana prevailing finally 70 to 64. Obviously, Illinois came out of that game feeling there were some things they could exploit, and boy, have they ever done it to them. Well, feeling that you go to overtime once anyone tells you that you have a chance. So I think that's what you have to believe. But in addition to that, this conference, and I have said this before, if it's this competitive, then you take Michigan State, if you will, and kind of set them aside. The balance of the conference is going to, going to be fairly competitive. Bob Knight's team ended up in the third place position because they came in with a tie with Wisconsin and Iowa. I mean, that, that just happened. That's by happenstance there. And then as you look at the rest of the conference, they're fairly equal. Now, Illinois was not considered in that group. I'd have to say that. But they played like it today. They were only in the group of teams that were supposed to be quickly out of here. Because they were a young team that really struggled through the year. But they're going to play on day three tomorrow. Leotis Brown hits them both. Eight points. 18 point lead. Last night, the upset over Minnesota, barely 67-64. This has been total domination the entire second half, led by four at the half, and they have never looked back since intermission. They came out, and Johnson was the one. Johnson gets out and makes a shot, and Bradford makes one early when he gets back in the game. Those guys initiated it, and it was from there on. It was been pretty much uh, an Illinois game, except for one time, Indiana got within eight on a three-pointer. Bradford with a three, 19 point lead. Jimenez gets it back for Indiana. Remember, Illinois won only three conference games all season, three and 13 to earn the 11th seed. They've won two in the last 24 hours. And they'll take the best shot against Jim O'Brien's Buckeyes tomorrow. What do they have to lose? Nobody expected them to be even in this game. So I would expect a similar effort, if not result, tomorrow. Oh, the effort has always been there. Oh, Bradford run. again. No, that's a kid run. <laughs> Four second half threes by Bradford, who didn't score at all in the first half. He shot that one. He just got a through those nets. Kid drop. Richardson. Richardson. Foul by Hawkins with a minute seven. Well, we said, boy, the lead by four with no points for Bradford in the first half has to be a good sign for Illinois. Well, it was a good sign when they finally got it to him. They had these kinds of results. He is deep in the corner, shoots that one high to get it over the outstretched hand of Luke Rucker. Larry Richardson, a new career high, 19 points. 82-66. Again, Ricker and Johnson in a heat. Keep it in the ground. We'll call you. As they burn the clock now. And the Illinois fans start their celebration. And they've got to be proud of this kind of effort that they've put on. Proud and maybe a little bit shocked. Three on the shot clock. I'll tell and you they what. They get a timeout. We could get a timeout Wait, because Lon time Kruger realized the shot clock was running down. I got his team to call it because Lewis Johnson with the ball didn't realize it. Been a while for Illinois. 
Illinois since early December, in fact, since they last won back-to-back -back games, and it was Bradley and Eastern Illinois early part of the season who fell back then and here it's Minnesota and Indiana who will fall. So again people are going to say what happens late in the season to Indiana? They've lost in the first round of the NCAA's three of the last four years. They've lost in their first game in this tournament each year. Last year in this quarterfinal they lost to Purdue. Mass got it off just in time, but uh, missed everything, and the shot clock expires. Well, David, first of all, what you have to take into consideration, this is in a, this is the, the Big Ten tournament where you can get beaten. The fact are, they may be better. It, to me, it looks like Illinois has just made more improvement than Indiana over the course of the season, and you and I have seen both of these teams over Indiana. the course of the season. I mean, that's what's evident in this game. We've improved all the way to their best scoring game of the season. Season high, 82 points. And I don't think coming into the game, you and I had a conversation. Neither one of us thought that, that Illinois would have 82 points. We thought if they got over 60, that they were going to be in pretty good shape. And the question was, can they hold Indiana somewhere in the 60s? And they've done that, too. Yeah. So they've gotten it on both sides, being really solid. Missed by Jimenez with 18 seconds. Illinois played Ohio State tough when they got together in the regular season. Lost by only three. They'll have another crack tomorrow in the semifinals as a stunning upset winner over third-seeded 17th-ranked in.